Hi everyone. Today we have with us the EDP commercial team who will share with us their RPA experience. As the transformation lead, what drove you to set up automation or RPA in EDP commercial? And what was the problem you aim to solve? Our uh, main initial uh, challenge uh, five years ago was about uh, our uh, operational uh, elasticity. So um, how to operate in an um, autonomous way and a different way uh, that improves quality uh, by one side, but also um, uh, moving us faster uh, and also try to be um, much more uh, cost effective. RPA uh, accelerates the, the way of doing business uh, with new ways um, of work. So faster, better and cheaper. UiPath technology uh, fits our decision about the governance model because we decide to have um, a federated model uh, where the business users should be the transformation boosters or the artists uh, that should be uh, on stage. UiPath uh, from the very beginning uh, showed us uh, that uh, is a business driven technology that is used uh, and uh, developed uh, with a, a very open approach of generating RPA technology. Were there any challenges it commercial needed to address? RPA is a great tool to address these challenges. It allows us to internally quickly develop solutions for handling repetitive tasks, as I mentioned, big or small, without having to outsource the development of a robot, of a new implementation on the system, or to manually do it ourselves or an outsourcer. It allows us to save costs and gain flexibility in our operation. I see it as an accelerated way of capturing business value. Have you put in place any KPIs or measurements of success for RPA? The main KPI, the, the big main one, is always how much cost we save by not outsourcing a task, for example. This is a, the, main, the main one, or by not doing manually in-house. Another one we find very interesting is the service level of a task. For example, if, as I mentioned earlier, if you automate a, a simple task, it might not bring a great cost reduction, but it, great, it standardizes the execution and our response time of that task also minimizes the human error and human interaction, which is also re very relevant. Uh, another in interesting KPI we found is how independent was our department on dealing with a new process or a new issue. We saw that with RPA, many times, or, or most of the times, we did not even require to contact the IT department. We did not, don't, didn't need any company to outsource the robots to access the manual level, labor. It allows us to reduce time to value. Eduardo, as a psychologist yeah. and not as an IT professional, um, what is your team experience of RPA? It may seem odd, but psychology is really important in identification of the RPA opportunities. Uh, one of the things that I like about psychology is the understanding of people's behaviors, and that often ends up helping me find uh, what are the process with a lot of manual labor or with a large possibility of human error. Did it change the employee experience from an HR team member's perspective, and how? And could you also say that RPA has made HR more human. When we talk about the employee experience, uh, we think the best part of the automation in HR department is uh, have more time to listen your colleagues and think in new ideas that make them feel that we are closer to them while your RPA ensure the manual tasks. Little by little, uh, new ideas of engagement began uh, to emerge and there were not being made in the past by anyone and that could be easy and sure by the RPA. How did you approach the statement of RPA will not replace you? Uh, it only augments your power of and as a human being. My department uh, was not worried about it since most of the tasks that I automate at the beginning were tasks that I or other intern would have to do even RPA did not exist. That's actually a good, a good way of looking at it <laughs> from that perspective. What would be your advice for other companies who are about to embark or just starting their RPA journey? The main advice would be start with small automations. Start small, get comfortable with the technology, 
but always think of building those those small tech those small automations in a modular adaptive way soon you'll probably find ways to combine them and reach more potential and also keep challenging yourself to do a bit more complex processes and never forget to empower developers and business users to work and brainstorm together to find the best solution don't start with huge processes uh, look at achieving sustainable growth uh, one interesting thing is that in my department we developed an automation that i actually um, that, that i actually shared with eduardo's department so something that was built on the operations department went to the hr department and that's that's how you do it if you build it small and adaptive this is true. Uh, the fact that Pedro automated in a modular adaptive way was very easy to apply the automation in my context. It's a very good advice. Uh, I just had a, a simple advice too, to the other companies. I think the company should focus on people. They are open-minded and interested in learning more about the RPIs, RPAs, uh, not even if they don't have an IT background. Uh, because uh, you will see that motivated person who likes what he's doing or learning can bring a lot of value to your organization in this area. Also my perspective on this, um, so RPA technology uh, plays a, a key role speeding up the, the digital transformation journey. Uh, and if uh, you will uh, start or just start uh, this journey, you should remember that uh, no code will define the next generation of software. So think about uh, who should be uh, the main boosters of that transformation. This is uh, the opportunity to empower uh, your business people uh, and it's completely uh, crucial to join with nearness, technology, te technological and business skills. That combination will provide the best uh, use cases uh, and scale the RPA journey, which mainly happen uh, with business ownership. Therefore, ownership is proportional to business outcome. Would you do it again? Would you choose UiPath path again? Yes, uh, definitely. Regarding the UiPath, path, I think uh, that one of his advantage in, is the fact that is an easy software to learn and counts with so many sources, uh, different sources for learning more about it, uh, like uh, Wipad Academy, uh, internet videos, uh, community uh, forums. So obviously I would do it again. And Pedro, will you do it again too? Uh, yes, I would. But only if I had the freedom I did uh, when I first started. I had the freedom to explore, test, discover, and learn. I still obviously employ this mindset when approaching a new and more complex process. I feel that you cannot enforce RPA, but if you start doing it, you can quickly show its potential to your peers. And from my experience, feedback has been great. I would also do it again with YPF, not only as Edward mentions, because it provides great resources for learning. I'm a big fan, big fan of UIPF Academy, and I try to do all the trainings. I still have a few left, uh, but it's also a software company that listens to the community of users and developers, and it's constantly improving its products and it's integrating it with other products and softwares. Ricardo, Pedro, and Eduardo, I want to thank you for your time. Without a doubt, EDP Comercial has progressed greatly with the RPA journey. By implementing the federated COE model, and being one of the clients that we in New Path can truly say it's a partner to our joint hyper-automation journey. So thank you so much and stay safe.